I mean, this is this is maybe something that you had mentioned earlier as well of how um, the how often like the collaborators that you work with, it's often better if they're not paid, if if it's if they see it as something that they can benefit from too. So like in this case, he he really saw using art as a way to to uh, you know sermonize what what he was trying to get across to his congregants and uh, you know there's there's an interesting exchange here because he's also kind of parasiting off of your perform uh, your kind of parasitical intervention into his space by kind of um, also trying to feed off of the possibilities of your presence um, to to teach something to to his group and to the TV and yeah. <laughs> I think also to use each other, I think it's not per se something, you know, bad. I think it's great to be used mm -hmm. and, and, and to be useful to others. And, you know, it's just an invitation to use the performance with different things. But here I also say, for me, this kind of interpretation is, shows how open this is. One and the same piece can mean so different things. Mm -hmm. And it's not wrong, you know, to read it in a specific context in a specific group of audience in a specific way. Mm -hmm. And that's many times in this kind of, you know, sometimes you even start with artists uh, or, um, you know, in, in, in discussions as if there would not be, uh, you know, this plural and the beauty of many options, you know, it's a coexistence, mm -hmm. you know, even when I say sometimes that's not my family, I don't say that's not possible, that's not, not good, etc. It's just, you know, it's mm -hmm. a coexistence, I think. And then, then you know, each audience finds, of course, their own, you know, um, attraction, something that they can work with, that gives something to them, mm -hmm. something that they're able to read. Or sometimes, and if you are not able to read it, if you have no idea to, to read it, it's also many times I find very inspiring to, mm -hmm. to talk about something you don't know, you know. Um that you had to go through all this process of asking like architects and everything, you know, and like, like, how do you keep your energy when everybody says no? I mean, this is my experience in Germany as well. Is like the, the first response is always, it's impossible. And then the right. second is like, well, it'll cost a lot of money. And then, and then you have to, I mean, you have to like, you have to respond, uh, you can't take no for an answer or you have to yeah. find someone else to help. I mean, exactly. Yes. It's um, because you also see it here. Um, mm -hmm. When it was in the ground, somehow the steward was started to disconnect from the ground. So more material was going into it. Mm -hmm. And that's also why it's not the perfect pantheon. <laughs> pantheon eh? Because the, the poured over it. So because mm -hmm. many times with your like collaborations you're also kind of humanizing people that we are otherwise supposed to be kind of uh disgusted with or annoyed with or against yes. somehow um but i but i wonder like has has have any of these collaborations ever like escalated to the point that somebody was like hey man you you're making fun of me this is not okay like 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 far into the project you know what i i would say didn't really happen Big time. It happens uh, one that I worked on a workshop in Leipzig with some students where I said to them in the beginning, listen, I could do this workshop or we could do this workshop and do a quite intense thing because I would like to produce together out of this workshop also an art project, which is, of course, my excuse to stay, you know, extra and give extra energy. And, you know, it's not a simple work workshop, which I have been you know, paid or asked to do. Mm -hmm. And there, you know, most of the students then said yes. You know, all of them first said yes, but in the end I had to take one out because she didn't want it to have this in. And then I took it out. Mm -hmm. Of course, I tried to convince her because I liked it a lot what she did. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's always a bit of a negotiation. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, I would say altogether, uh, it uh, it didn't, didn't really happen for the protagonists, no. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think this this idea that you had mentioned of uh, sharing responsibility as well it it um it allows also for others to take responsibility somehow of the complicity in it. Sometimes you have to re-edit a bit. You know, I showed these films mm -hmm. to the protagonists, 
-hmm. and then I sometimes have to talk to them and then we find new ways to maybe edit it and change mm -hmm. it. This has happened quite a lot. It, ha it happens that there are different versions and then only one version gets public after being, you know, okayed mm -hmm. from the other side. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But sometimes it's also a new moment to discuss about art. When I was working with the Vatican, the Vatican first said, no, not this part where we, you know, say his nose is ugly, etc. And then I said, you were laughing about this. <laughs> to talk about a human Christ that has a sense of humor. <laughs> you yourself make yourself so unhuman to not have humor and be humans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they for a moment and then they said, okay, leave it in. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's great. I mean, I think then in this way, art can stimulate to, you know, discuss and, and, and find, you know, a mutual understanding, which, mm -hmm. you know, or acceptance. You know, I don't think that people should look at it and understand it the same way, but just yeah. acceptance of another view. Thank <laughs> you.